Once upon a time, there was a submarine captain named Robinson. He had worked for 11 years for a company called Agora, which looked for old, sunken ships deep in the ocean. Before working at Agora, Robinson had been a dedicated Navy man who loved his job, but his love for his job made him spend less time with his family, causing his wife to ask for a divorce. This also meant he saw less of his son, Martin. Robinson was very sad about this because he had spent his whole life focused on his career. Even though he was very good at his job, Agora suddenly fired him. He only got 8,600 pounds as a goodbye payment and couldn't ask for more because he had no work contract. Feeling sad, Robinson met with two old workmates, Kirsten and Blackie, at a cafe. They had also been fired from Agora for no clear reason. Kirsten was very stressed, taking medicine to help him feel better because he had to take care of his family and pay off debts. Robinson felt embarrassed, especially when he thought about his son living with a rich stepfather. During their talk, Kirsten told a story about one of his last trips with Agora. He had gone to the Black Sea to find a sunken Nazi submarine that was said to have gold nuggets worth a lot of money. They found the submarine but Agora had left it there because of political problems between Russia and Georgia. The Black Sea is between these two countries and Agora didn't want to get involved in their issues. Upset with their old company, Robinson, Kirsten, and Blackie decided to go after the treasure themselves, with Robinson leading the team. However, they needed a lot of money for the trip. Kirsten suggested they meet with an investor named Lewis to get the needed funds. Robinson and Blackie entered the office and were welcomed by Daniels, the secretary. Daniels greeted them warmly and listened to their story. It started back in 1941 when the Nazis, needing help, asked Russia for a loan. Russia, trying to stay out of trouble, agreed, and sent gold by submarine, hoping the Nazis would not attack. However, the submarine never reached Germany, and Hitler invaded Russia anyway, leading to a four-year war. Years later, rumors about the lost submarine spread. Agora found it, but just after their discovery, a conflict between Russia and Georgia made Agora leave it behind. Robinson had a daring plan to get the treasure using a submarine, but he needed $180,000. They hoped Lewis, an investor, would help. Lewis quickly agreed, asking for 40% of the treasure. He also sent Daniels to go with them as his representative. With the money arranged, Robinson and Blackie started putting their team together. Knowing they would be in Russian waters, Robinson wanted half of his crew to be Russian. They chose Reynolds and Peters, both former Navy men, Levchenko for the kitchen, Zaitsa for the engine, and Baba for sonar. Morozov was picked to read the maps, and Fraser and Gittens, skilled divers, were chosen to get the gold from the German submarine. On the day they were set to leave, a young man named Tobin showed up. He said he was a friend of Kirsten and brought sad news. Kirsten had taken his own life to leave insurance money for his family. He left a message asking Tobin to say sorry to Robinson because he couldn't come on the trip. Seeing Tobin's urgent need, Robinson invited him to join the crew. The submarine they bought was old and rusty, but Robinson stayed hopeful. He quickly had his crew check the submarine. They found a few problems. The ship's battery only charged up to 70% the fuel tank was leaking, and there was no safety suit. There was only one radio for talking to others. Despite these problems, Robinson was sure everything would be okay, as long as the submarine could dive. He told the crew they wouldn't use the radio since Russian ships might hear them. After checking everything, Robinson explained their mission. They were going to the Black Sea to find a German submarine filled with hundreds of kilos of gold. Everyone would get an equal share after giving 40% to Lewis, the main investor. Some crew members didn't like this plan. Daniels complained. Worried that the crew might fight each other for more gold, Robinson ignored the complaint and told everyone to start the submarine. Fraser, another crew member, also didn't like Robinson's decision. He caused problems among his British friends, saying they deserved more than the Russians. He even showed he was upset by throwing away the food Levchenko made. On the Russian side, Zaitsev wouldn't let Tobin help, thinking he wasn't skilled enough. Tobin, though, stayed calm and followed orders. The next day, Robinson saw Tobin in the control center, looking at a photo on his cell phone. Tobin was looking at an ultrasound picture of his girlfriend. Robinson told him he would soon be rich and make his children happy, giving Tobin hope for the future. Suddenly, the submarine was covered in red light, an urgent sign that something was wrong. Everyone froze, including Fraser, who ran to turn off the engine. Baba, working with the sonar, had tense news. A Russian warship was nearby. They hadn't been seen yet, but Robinson took no chances. He told Blackie to slow the submarine to a very slow speed. After days of careful travel, they finally reached the Black Sea, right where the German ship was hidden. Morozov excitedly told Robinson about the fine. Meanwhile, Robinson went to the engine room to check on a leak. Zaitsev and others were already fixing it. Blackie said they'd found where the leak was coming from, but they needed to empty the fuel to fix it right. Robinson told them to hurry with the repairs 
because they needed to recharge the batteries for a deeper dive soon. Before leaving, Blackie shared worrying news. Some British crew members were unhappy with how the treasure would be split, and tensions were high between them and the Russian crew. Robinson was unsure until a loud argument started in the kitchen over lottery tickets. To his shock, someone had even used the submarine's only radio to check lottery results, a dangerous move that could alert the nearby Russian warship. Angry, Robinson broke the radio and stressed that everyone would share equally. He strongly warned that he wouldn't hesitate to remove anyone risking the mission, but the trouble didn't stop there. In the engine room, Tobin accidentally caused a problem while helping Zaitsev. Fraser, already upset and passing by, misunderstood the situation and thought Blackie was attacking Tobin. In a heated moment, he pulled out a knife. Blackie tried to calm things down, explaining he was just guiding Tobin. But Fraser, upset with Robinson's leadership, stabbed Black. Blackie was fixing something when he accidentally knocked over a can of gasoline. This started a fire in the engine room and caused a small explosion. Robinson was thrown against the wall and knocked out. He didn't wake up for 18 hours. When Robinson finally woke up, he found his crew split up. The Russian members had taken control of part of the submarine and all the drinking water. Reynolds came to him with more bad news. The submarine was badly damaged, and the steering part would only last 36 more hours before the engines stopped working completely. Determined to save his crew, Robinson went to the Russians to make peace. He explained that the German submarine they were looking for was the same type as theirs, and they could use it for spare parts. The first step was to find the German sub, but the sonar was broken from the explosion, so Baba had to use his ears to detect it. He listened for sounds to find objects around them. Miraculously, Baba heard something 100 meters away. It wasn't clear if it was the German submarine or just underwater hills. To check it out, they needed divers to go look. Fraser and Peters got ready to dive, and Tobin, who had some scuba diving experience from school, volunteered to join them. The three of them put on their diving gear and went into the dark waters of the Black Sea. Tobin was nervous and scared in the deep, dark water, but Fraser kept him calm. They followed Robinson's directions to the spot, but when they arrived, Fraser's heart sank. It looked like just a pile of sand. Under the Black Sea, Tobin saw something under the sand. It was the submarine they were looking for, hidden under layers of silt. Inside the submarine, they found creepy remains, including several skulls. They moved on to the engine room, where they found a steering shaft just like the one their own submarine needed. They quickly took it. While fixing their submarine, Fraser found the gold they were looking for. He started taking the gold with the steering shaft without waiting for Robinson to say it was okay. Back at their submarine, Robinson noticed the load was very heavy and guessed they were also taking gold. Daniels said he was worried that their submarine might not handle the extra weight, urging Robinson to leave some of the gold. But Robinson hoped they could manage both the gold and the steering shaft. Things got worse when Peter, trying to keep some falling gold bars from moving, tragically fell into a trench. Despite the accident, the crew now had a bigger problem, figuring out how to safely bring the gold to the surface. Daniels wanted to go up to the surface right away, worried that the risks of going back to Sevastopol were too great. However, the rest of the crew didn't agree, knowing that going to the surface might make them get caught by Russian ships. They decided to take the risk and start the submarine again to get away from Russian waters. Feeling left out, Daniels asked for a private talk with Robinson. In a shocking twist, Daniels admitted that Agora, their old company, had planned everything from the beginning. Agora had paid for the mission, planning to catch them when they surfaced. He explained that his meeting with Kirsten at the cafe was fake. Kirsten was just an actor hired for the role, just like Lewis, who pretended to be an investor. Daniels wasn't really Lewis's secretary. He was working for Agora. Shocked by the betrayal, Robinson locked up Daniels. The truth hit him hard, especially knowing that Blackie and Peter had suffered because of a scheme they didn't even know they were part of. When Robinson told his crew the whole story, Everyone was very upset and wanted to take immediate action against Daniels. However, Robinson convinced them that hurting Daniels wouldn't fix what had happened or change the past. Determined not to waste their efforts, Robinson decided to direct the submarine toward the Turkish Sea, a place where neither Russian patrols nor Agora would follow. Morozov warned that the journey would be dangerous, moving through shallow and rocky sea bottoms, but they saw no other choice and agreed to go ahead. They put in the new steering shaft and arranged the gold. Daniels was asked to help Fraser but that was a bad idea. Daniels secretly told Fraser to turn against Zaitsev. With the submarine working again, Zaitsev was in charge of making sure the shaft stayed stable. At first, the steering shaft didn't work right, causing a fire and shaking the submarine. But Robinson managed to keep it steady at a depth of 60 meters. Their journey was smooth until Baba noticed a large rock formation. Robinson quickly told everyone to stop. Working together, the crew stopped just in time avoiding hitting the rocks. They were in a shallow area with two choices, go back or move through a narrow space less than 100 meters wide that could lead them to safety in about an hour. Robinson chose the second option, trusting Baba to guide them past the rocks. Fraser didn't agree with this risky move, 
worried about the crew's safety, but Robinson ignored his worries and told everyone to get back to work. Meanwhile, Daniels kept influencing Fraser, eventually convincing him that they needed to go to the surface. Overwhelmed by the stress of moving through the tight space, Fraser lost his temper. He tricked Zaitsev into thinking he needed help, then hit him fatally with a wrench. Fraser and Daniels told everyone that Zaitsev's death was an accident, but the crew was doubtful after seeing blood on Fraser's face and clothes. Despite the arguments, Daniels kept pushing Robinson to go to the surface. Amid these fights, Fraser noticed the submarine was sinking faster than they thought. They were dropping into a trench, which would put a lot of pressure on the submarine. When a new leak appeared in the engine room, everyone, including Robinson, rushed to fix it. They managed to stop the first leak, but then a bigger hole opened up, spraying water everywhere. The water's force knocked Tobin out cold. Robinson and Morozov quickly moved Tobin to safety while the rest of the crew tried to seal the new hole. However, more leaks kept appearing overwhelming the crew. Daniels realized their desperate situation and made a tough decision. He sealed off the engine room, trapping his crewmates inside. The trapped crew had no choice but to wait as water filled the room. Soon, an electrical short caused an explosion, making things worse. Daniels tried to escape, closing another door behind him, but his belt got caught. He asked Morozov for help, but Morozov, aware of Daniels' betrayal, refused. Now, only Robinson, Morozov, and the unconscious Tobin were left. Discovering that Robinson had hidden three life jackets, Morozov was angry and felt guilty knowing his friends were dying below. With little time left, Morozov and Tobin put on the jackets. Robinson, planning to use an emergency exit after making the submarine safe to open, told them to go first. Tobin wanted to take a gold bar with, but Robinson warned that it might make him sink. Robinson helped Morozov and Tobin escape through the submarine's exit hatch. Once at the surface, Tobin was happy to see the sun again. When Morozov joined him, he told Tobin to wait for Robinson. But Morozov then shared a sad truth. There was no emergency exit. Robinson had lied, choosing to stay with his sinking submarine. Tobin was shocked, his hope gone, especially when another life jacket floated up beside them. For a moment Tobin thought it was Robinson, but it was actually filled with gold bars and a photo of Robinson's family. A sad reminder of the captain's final act. Thanks for your time. Please like and subscribe.